Hello friends, welcome to EPG Pachyala and today we are going to take our knowledge of geography further with a new module called resource geography. I am Dr. Seema Mehra Parihar who specializes in natural resource management and remote sensing and GIS and has been teaching for last now around 30 years in University of Delhi. Let us go ahead and learn the usefulness of resources in today's lecture. We will be able to through this lecture understand the meaning of resource, what is it? We are also able to visualize that where resource geography is placed in that big gambit of geography discipline. We will also be able to understand and conceptualize the need for studying resources. We will also what we will be able to do is understand that today in today's environment resource geography and the different resource spaces which are constructed are unique. Further, we will also be able to comprehend those resource vulnerabilities through a concept called resource periphery. So, let us go ahead dear friends and let us get introduced to what is this word called resources. Resources are definitely required in today's world and you all must have been using these resources even knowing it or unknowing it. What my friends I want to tell you look at the diagram also which is around you just look around and start telling me about those different land use classes. What are these land use classes? Do you know it? Of course, you all are postgraduate students here friends. These are agricultural lands, these are settlements around you, these are those water ponds and so on and so forth. So, none of us whatever is there can say that we in our lifetime have not used resources. But what is a resource? and what is a natural resource is something which is so very important. For me, what I want to tell you my friends, please remember the name of Zimmerman. I will ask you again during the class, what is the name that I said? Zimmerman. He said resources are not, they become and that is something which is so very important. And so, before we go ahead with that, just give me some examples of a land resource that you use. Water resource, of course you all drink water, of course you all cannot do anything without water and all that and that is something what is so very important. But for me as I was telling you, who is this father, what is that name? Zimmerman and now and what is that line of Zimmerman? If you do not even remember any one term, my request is just remember these small definition always that resources are not they become and that is something which is so very important. And when I talk about Zimmerman's model, of course, we will be expanding this module in the coming lectures. But for you now at present, I want you all to just remember three words. These three words are one starts with N, second starts with R and the third again starts with R. And the first word everything that is around is not a resource dear friends. Everything that is around us is a neutral stuff. It is on us whether we make it a resource or whether we force it, we abuse it and we make it a resistance. For example, what I want to tell you is that we also have drinking water and we also have floods. So, drinking water is a resource that means fresh water is a resource because we drink it. But floods are something which we do not like it and that is called a resistance. Similarly, degraded land is a resistance, but the moment we make it fertile and we have agriculture on it, that is something a resource. So, this is something which is very important. So, what did Zimmerman say? Of course, you all said it rightly and you all know it, resources are not they become. As till now, we only need to remember neutral stuff, resource and resistance. Let us take our learning forward through a definition given by Bridge. He says that resources are not given, similar to what Zimmerman said. It is everything that is given is a neutral stuff. But culturally mediation, appraisal of the institutions which are around us, let it be political institutions, let it be social commitments, let it be our belief system, 
All these things are the ones which guide us and which make resources what resources are and that is something which we all always need to remember. Now you find that there is a diagram and the diagram definitely tells us that these resources which are mediated appraisal that you all can see around you are the ones which are guided by economic factors, political institutions, social attributes and your belief systems. So that is something which is very important. So what all we have learned just now and what all has added to our learning that anything that is around till the time we human beings decide to use it, it is not a resource. But the moment we use it, making use of our agency and construct it taking care of the economic and social attributes around us, it becomes our resource. Now let us take this journey forward to the discipline which we all are studying today. That is resource geography. What is it? Resource geography is made up of two words. One is resource and another is geography. So that is something which is very important. And again, as I said, what you need to remember is CMA, CMA, culturally mediated appraisal. So that is something which is important. Is it a geography? We all know what geography is. What is geography? Geography is a subject where we study patterns, where we study heterogeneous and homogeneous patterns and that is something that is so very important. And in a paper called resource geography, we follow the nobothetic ideology of resources, uh, of the geography which we all learn and we are going to study this paper within that. And I like to just tell you about it, that when we started off this paper, it was a part of economic geography. But today what we are taking our learning forward is that today also is resource geography a part of economic geography or is it something different? Though I would like to tell you that in 2015 onwards again there is a discourse that is going in America and UK and Australia that we again should today in today's world we should again take this word called resources and a subject called resource geography into the gambit of economic geography, but we have many schools of thought which are giving us a different or conveying us that today we should all talk about, we should also take this subject called resource geography as the way it is as our few people like 1933 onwards Zimmerman and all fought for it. So that is something what my request to you all. Therefore what we find that anything that is around us in fact is simply a resource in case if we all try to make it that and also use it keeping our culture, technology, functional, financial and all political institutions in mind and that is something which is so very important. So that is something that is a resource. Now we should remember our definitions, I think so. Now we all can define resource geography and resources by just remembering eight alphabets. One is N that is neutral stuff, R is resistance, R is resource. U is use, U is utility and then we also have C that is your culture, T is your transformation and we also have R as a basic requirement for it, N is of course we need to have a need for it. For me we all have heard the definition necessity is the mother of invention, out here also a neutral stuff will only become a resource in case if we all decide today that we all want to convert it for our usefulness and once we do it that is something which is there. So now let us go ahead and let us understand further to our resource geography. As geography is the one subject which is derived from many subjects and we also talk about location and all and in the nomothetic period this geography was converted and this further we started doing and we started further understanding it falls into the umbrella of resource geography and this also applies to the societal and the other requirements which are there within this gambit of our learning. We need to remember that there are different social factors which are there and we all have to learn and we all have to definitely follow them. And as for example, you have so many changes which are taking place and which is so very important. So we also need to find out as once we have understood that this is what it is, we need to find out its identity in a subject called economic geography. As geography 
develop along nomothetic lines after the 1950s just along with the quantitative revolution resources and this environmental geography it became the special subject everywhere around the world where the large, where the geography was being taught and what we all learned that today policy responses are also required towards this subject and this is something which bridge has definitely highlighted in his paper the applied ecological different aspects of resources and the relationships of environment with the neutral stuff around for the need of a society again became very important in textbooks you may find that the subject called geography is so very relevant and resources today we all have to study and there are many names first name if you remember i said zimmerman then bridge then bruce michel is something which you all have to remember let's now try to recognize and understand the identity of resource geography in a subject called economic geography here you study the relationship between resource geography and economic geography so that because both of them are just lying just next to it so we'll understand that economic geography and the resource geography debate has again become so forward in today's time in after after 2015 we are also going to understand the importance of resources to the global economy around the world and we'll also try to understand that even there are vulnerable areas in that peripheral which are definitely important pieces of spaces which we have to highlight in a paper called resource geography okay so now by now you would have understood that relevance of resource geography is very much there relevance of resources is very much there so now what i want is look around yourself and just try to find out that why is this need for resources increasing just as you look into the graph the need is increasing why because the population is increasing and this graph is the one which is guiding you and which is telling you about the increasing population in 2060 so now what we find is that there are innumerable reasons and that we have to take this journey of resources forward for a simple reason because today all around the world there is a crisis crisis of all resources if you look at it land water soil all these resources and this especially in case if you look at it though we say that water water everywhere but not a drop to drink but here again there is a problem you have very less drinking water and even there are people who are moving ahead without a drop of water with the climate change and with the glaciers melting we have lot of issues which we need to do with number 2 the problem is that there is also a theory called natural resource curse theory and that theory is the one which we definitely have to also remember that is theory is guiding us that in case if there is one resource which is there in a region which is flourishing that everybody will come there and will only use that resource so ultimately instead of use it will become an abuse you all remember what mahatma gandhi said what did mahatma gandhi say he said that we have enough for man's need but we do not have enough for man's greed and that is something which is there in this curse theory imagine a situation and don't you all dear friends please do not lie but don't you all also do that in case if you are living in number of flats around you if there is a tank timing of the water coming just for 2 hours you all will store water into those big buckets of yours and that something that resource which we all were so happy with somebody may come late and who has not opened or who has not filled his buckets with the water will find a problem so my request to you all is please remember that we all have to use resource water resource or any resource for that matter in a correct manner and what is the word for it it's an optimum we all have to use this in an optimum way so now what we all have also to do is that we all have to take our journey of using following the principles and what are these principles which are there is also there because of these little words which are these words which i'm talking about which you should all definitely remember the good word is the starts with u that is use and the bad word is 
abuse, misuse, even underuse for that matter is a bad word. If you have something, you also use it and that is something which is so very important. And so now we take this forward and we say that all those local production values which we assign to the resources which are there are again we have to take care of it optimally. Relatively these all powerful centrifugal forces which are there or are getting confused with those centripetal surroundings around us. We all have to remember that these linkages which we establish are established with only one vision in mind and that vision is optimal utilization of resources. So, what is it dear friends? I would like to tell you here a statement by Michel that we have definitely we all need to take care of optimal use of resource so that we can have an optimal time that is important, optimum quantity that is important, optimum utilization that is important. So, space optimally place, time optimal time and also the quantity that is optimal. You do not like something which is too much if you want less. Say less water is a problem, but too much water in the form of floods is also a problem. Very less under utilization or this thing is also a problem. So, we all need to take care of it in different parts of the earth. In recent uh, decades in case if we have a look at it, our society is definitely getting transformed and cultural mediations of resources have incremented by the emerging, by the environmental, by the various uses, various concerns for the negative things also which are happening around us. Of course, we have come across recently, we have also seen that there are problems which are around us, climate change is happening, we all are wondering what will be the temperature, the way it will rise because we all also get uh, uh, fresh water from our glaciers whether they will melt or they will not melt, we all will also come across that. We all are also finding that sometimes we expected that the rain this time and today the rain is not happening at this time. This all is a problem. So, then that means my friends we have a neutral stuff which is changing its definition, which is changing its dynamism. So, what we need to remember? We definitely need to remember that all these things which are happening, global problems, global changes, global uh, uh, diversity, biodiversity and all those degradation which are taking place, who all can consume it? Of course, we all have also to see our individual footprints which are there. This recent Paris uh, conference which happened and a lot of voices which are against uh, and for and all those commitments which we have done, we all have always to remember that the resource value that we give to a particular neutral stuff or a required stuff is something which should always be maintained with one keyword another that is called SD. What is that? That is sustainable development. We definitely have to promise Please promise with me even now when you are watching this program that we all have to take care of our future generation. And when I say future generation, of course we all know it, we all it is so easy to say that tree is a renewable resource, but darling we all know it. If we cut a tree today, that tree will take many years to come ahead. So then do not you feel that you want to be as a contributory to the society? And for that we all have to understand the relevance and importance of this word called resource. MNCs are there, those multinational companies, they have bigger uh, corporate agendas, but they all are also based and they all are also talking about the foreign direct investments in terms of making use of resources. The perceptions are different, the understanding is different. And different spaces react in a different way. Somebody may be happy with just only one chapati, but somebody may also be wanting 10 chapatis. Somebody may be saying, oh my god, why should I take chapati? I want to have a fat burger, not only one but around 10 with a 
with something inside that also which is quietly fried also. So that is then that means there is a big gap between the consumers and the way it is. So resources are dynamic, it all depends they are diverse, institutions are diverse, the reactions are diverse, evaluations are so very diverse and that only tells us whether it is going to be positive or it is going to be negative. And so then that means what I am trying to tell you is simply that what is very important is that resources are so relevant and of course to understand and to use them nicely in a better framework is only to go ahead and understand the subject. So now let us also try to think once the resources are right there in the central place we also have something called periphery. Periphery are all those border, uh, bordered places which are there, bordered can be it depends on our own perception, sometimes the periphery can be right in the center too because it is talking about people with different identities, people who are in the vulnerable zones, people who are in mind in the vulnerable zones and we do not want them to have enough resources. Those communities are there, they have developed mainly because we all there are many people who exploit them. So by now we have understood that there are disparities and you also have vulnerable zones what we call resource peripheries. Resource peripheries is something which is a word which has been added just very recently after 2000 and this is something which we all definitely need to remember and first and foremost in case if we actually want some solutions or some resources to be taken positively, we have to take care of the downtrodden, we have to take care, we have to exchange, we have to have these resource peripheries in check, vulnerable zones, all those parched faces, all those poor faces which are not using resources, forget about the optimally, it is underutilized. So these poor are becoming more poorer and rich are becoming big richer and do you know something I am not going in this lesson at all on the data for a simple reason because I want you all only to remember and be very conceptually clear in the foremost modules in the foremost lecture we will be talking about the data but right now I want you all to remember that it is in your mind that makes resource a resource and it is in your hands, it is in your brain, it is in your intention that you make resource a resistance. Please my friends, my young people who are listening to me and who are taking this course called resource geography, always remember that Mahatma Gandhi who rightly said and the statement I have told you before also, yes. Oh yes, you said it rightly, we have enough for man's need but not for man's greed and that is something which you all always to remember. So now after Zimmerman, Bridge, Mahatma Gandhi, Bruce Mitchell, now we find different types of resources and even different users in this resource periphery because if you remember that N which I was telling you, if the need is not there that resource would not become a resource at all it may just become an underutilized resource. So for production is something which is so very important and the resource development is another thing which is so very important with the flexible specializations. So my friends what we need to remember that these are all structures which we need to work today forward. The structures we need to construct and there are different people, different people who are working towards it and we all have always to remember that this is today a topic of debate and we all are trying to understand what the people around in the world is talking about. This and every resource space is unique. When I say every resource space is unique, we all have to remember that there are haves and have nots. If there are haves and have nots then that means there are some spaces which are very rich and there are some spaces which are very poor. Now how spaces become rich and poor? It's people like you and me who make space poor and rich, who make all these resource spaces in a very nice way. So we need to also remember that we need to have a major investment in those regions which have neutral stuff enough, but who will do that? That's a big question for me. Who will do that? That person who will be doing that will be somebody 
who will understand the importance and relevance of resource. That means manpower is something which is so very important. And we need all those good governance uh, issues which are around us, which we need to do it. As I said in the resource periphery, even though communities which are there, sometimes the resource trap also just haunts them. Why it haunts them? Imagine a situation, you are hungry and you do not have enough around for yourself and that's something which is going to be a problem. So for me, my friends, what I want to tell you is that we today need to take care of our resource space. We need to take care of all those external skills which we use so that we can harness more resource. We also need to have a culture very strong and do you want, do you know something? That in case a situation comes, the moment the government changes, you also may find sometimes resource policies changes and when those policies changes, we have everything around us but we cannot harness that resource. What is the purpose? The purpose is that something called crisis, something called trap should not exist. Nothing should be locked in. We have to take our resource usefulness forward. And for this, all those insights, all those things which are in our mind are something we all have to take it forward and we all have to do it. But the sad part is that even the ones in case if there are 10 of you who are sitting together and who are uh, studying this paper, you may find that somebody may be wasting resources. But do we ever check? Societies are changing. And only because in our mind, what do we think? Friends, we think that somebody who is consuming more resources, who is having a big car, who is wearing a lot of material things on their body are the ones who are superb. But my friends, I would just like to tell you all that they are the ones who are wasting resources. Why people migrate from rural areas to urban areas? Why? Because they all think in their minds, in case if they all come to urban areas, they'll be able to use more resources. So that greed for resources, without even understanding the world, we all try to just move ahead, but we all have so many questions in mind. I would only like to tell you one, or want you all to just take one message from this, and that is that, from wherever we are, from wherever which part of the world we are, we all have to participate in making those peripheral communities in the mainstream. The word for me is, it should be an inclusive society where the word called resistance, resources, resilience, adaptation and all that should be in a very inclusive way and that is the only way in which we all can make our resource spaces flourish. Now when you find that you migrated and there are so many communities which are around you, but they all are wanting best, but we all need to protect everybody. We all need to take our societies and make them all inclusive so that we can have resource rich regions and those resource rich regions for everybody around us. That means those peripheral communities which have been there, they've also been brought into the mainstream. So now what I want you all to just remember is that you all need to think. You all need to think spatially. Why? Because we all make our decisions in a very spatial way. And that's something which is so important. Resources are extremely varied. And often sometimes it happens, you may find something, you know, which is not there in your region, but you may like it. We all know that the multiple resources, I'm not going to the, go to the classification of resources here, but definitely we all remember a few classifications that is called renewable and non-renewable, which is there, ubiquitous, which is there everywhere, rarities, which are again everywhere. So that's something, you know, which are very rare and that's something, so that dialogue which is there between these all different classifications of resources, we all always have to take care of them. And as geography we are studying, we all would be doing what? We all would be making patterns of two kinds. Either homogeneous patterns we'll be making or we'll be making heterogeneous patterns. Sometimes it's not that one is correct and one is not correct. Sometimes some may be there and sometimes some may not be correct. So resources are not 
they become. So what has been our learning, dear friends? The learnings have only been three or four. Number one, it's not that anything that's around us is us to use it with hands full or hands just occupied. We all should always remember that resources are here for protecting us. Resources are here so that tomorrow in case if we need, we all would be needing it. So for me, all those words which I taught you right in the beginning, we all have to remember. The word with N is, yes, neutral stuff. Thank you friends and now I'm sure you all would have actually enjoyed and would have learned. So what have been the major learnings today? One and foremost the learning is that resources are not they become. And who said this? Yes, Zimmerman. Number two, a word that we have to remember with N are two or three I should say. N is a neutral stuff, N is a need, N is a necessity. All these words are so very important. But and then another word is T. T is what? T is transformation. Who is going to transform all this? That's something which is so very important. But the biggest word, the largest word which we all have to remember in this paper called resources is you. What is that you? Not why or you. I'm not talking about you all. I'm talking about the you. You is usefulness. You is utility. But always remember that if we want to do something, if we want to help the society, if we want to take this journey towards the society forward in a sustainable development way, resource geography paper is the paper which we all not only to study just to pass an exam or just for the sake of getting a certificate, but we all have to see to it, it becomes a part of our life within us and we all always remember that our every action should definitely be towards making it a resource and not a resistance for everybody. Thank you very much dear friends of this EPG Patshala. Enjoy using resources but always remember that there are people around us who are not having enough and we all have to not only conserve resources around us but we all have to see to it that people around us also are using resources wisely. Thank you very much.